Mark is the shortest of our Gospels and was probably the first, uh, first of our Gospels to be written. It's always been one of my favorite Gospels because it's a very clever composition, a very intelligent composition. Jesus shows up in Mark's Gospel as an adult. Uh, he uh, is baptized by John. He goes into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he comes back from the wilderness, he begins proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God. The time has been fulfilled, says Jesus. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus begins then his public ministry after his baptism by John, a ministry in which he uh, tells parables about the kingdom of God that's coming and in which he does miracles to show that the kingdom is almost here. These miracles are quite spectacular. He casts out demons, and when a demon comes out of somebody, the demon will cry out, you are the son of God, and Jesus will silence him. Jesus will uh, heal people who are sick, and frequently when he heals somebody who's sick, he'll tell them, don't tell anybody what's happened. Jesus will even raise people from the dead. I mentioned Jairus' daughter, Mark chapter 6. Jairus' uh, daughter is ill on the verge of death. Jairus comes to Jesus and asks Jesus to heal her. Uh, Jesus goes to the girl. Uh, by the time he gets there, she's already dead. But Jesus sends everybody out of the house, and, ex except for the two parents and three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. He goes into the room where the dead girl is lying. He takes out, puts out his hand, and he raises her up from the dead. And he tells them, don't tell anybody that I've done this. Why does Jesus keep telling everybody, don't tell anyone? This is a distinctive feature of the Gospel of Mark. It's sometimes called the Messianic secret. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus tells people that he heals, people that he's raised from the dead. He tells the demons. He tells his own disciples, don't tell anyone. In fact, it's striking who knows who Jesus is in Mark's Gospel. It's striking because not very many people understand who Jesus is, that he's the Son of God who has come to die for the sins of the world. Who does know that Jesus is the Son of God in Mark's Gospel? Well, Mark knows it because he's writing about it. You know about it because you're reading about it. Who else, though? God knows that Jesus is the Son of God because when Jesus is baptized in Mark's Gospel, God says, you are my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus must know it because God tells him. Uh, and the demons know it because when they're cast out, they proclaim him as the Son of God. No one else, though, seems to know Jesus' identity in Mark's Gospel. The disciples are ignorant of who Jesus is, and Jesus continually asks them, don't you understand? Finally, halfway through the Gospel in chapter 8, Peter confesses, you are the Messiah. Jesus says, don't tell anyone. And then he says, the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem, be rejected by the scribes and the elders, be executed, and on the third day rise again. And Peter says, not you, Lord. <laughs> In other words, Peter doesn't understand that Jesus is the Messiah, yes, but he's a Messiah who has to suffer and die. From then on in Mark's Gospel, Jesus continu continues to say that he has to be rejected and executed, and on every occasion his disciples show they don't know what he's talking about. And then you get to the Passion narrative, where Jesus is actually denied, uh, he's betrayed by one of his followers, denied by another, abandoned by all the others, he's crucified and feels that he's abandoned by God himself. Nobody seems to have understood but then at the moment of the crucifixion, something significant happens. When Jesus is crucified and cries his last cry in Mark's gospel, we're told that the temple curtain is ripped in half. The curtain in the temple of God that separated the holy place where God dwelt from everyone else. The temple curtain is ripped so that God now has direct access to his people in the death of Jesus. And strikingly, somebody recognizes then who Jesus is. The centurion who has just crucified Jesus looks upon him and says, truly this man was the Son of God. The only one who understands Jesus in this gospel is a pagan who's crucified him. No one else understands. Mark's gospel is about the suffering Son of God whom nobody recognizes.